Hey guys, today I want to talk a little bit about blanchable versus non-blanchable rashes and the key things that you need to know about why we even care about differentiating these. I remember going through intern year and we would always highlight whether this rash was blanchable or not, and I never really understood the importance of it, and so I wanted to go over that really quickly with you here. So first we've got our blanchable rashes and we have our non-blanchable rashes. There's some really good YouTube videos that show uh, dioscopy, uh, basically using a cover slip uh, from a microscope slide and just pressing down on uh, a rash to see if it blanches or not. And so you can see in this first example, when they press down, the redness goes away. And then uh, in this second slide here, uh, with the non-blanching rash, when they press down with the microscope cover, uh, the rash does not go away at all. So in general, for me, uh, a non-blanchable rash tends to be a little bit more concerning. So it's not always more concerning, but it's usually gonna be a little bit more dangerous or, or have more dangerous etiologies associated with it. So a blanchable rash uh, usually just tells you that there's inflammation uh, and vasodilation. So if you have vasodilation of the blood vessels, then you're clearly going to have, uh, you know, this look like this, like, you know, you've got it vasodilated here. And so when you actually put pressure on here, it's going to flatten it and get rid of that redness. Whereas in a non-blanchable rash, uh, you are going to have basically erythrocyte extravasation, which basically means that the red, red blood cells are leaking out into uh, the skin, out of the blood vessel. And this uh, has a lot more concerning etiologies. And so when you press down on this, it is actually not going to get rid of the rash. So again, I want you to remember that blanchable rashes are secondary to vasodilation, whereas non-blanchable rashes are secondary to erythrocyte extravasation. And so blanchable rashes can really be any kind of generic rash where there's any kind of inflammation going on. Um, I like to think of even just like, you know, eczema rashes or viral rashes, um, you know, more of the benign rashes that, that come around. Whereas a non-blanchable rash, uh, sometimes it could be benign. So for example, um, a purpura or an ecchymosis, which is basically just a bruise. But then you can also have petechiae, uh, which can be uh, concerning in some different conditions. And then the main one I want you to be aware of is vasculitis. So the hallmark of vasculitis, especially what's known as small vessel vasculitis, is non-blanching palpable purpura. And when you hear this term, palpable purpura, that's non-blanching, uh, then you should immediately think of small vessel vasculitis, which could also, uh, sometimes you can hear it called uh, leukocytoclastic vasculitis as well. There's a couple other rash red flags that I wanted to briefly go over. And this was by this great video from this uh, ch YouTube channel, Clinical Tips. And they kind of laid out eight criteria that would lead you to be a little bit more concerned about uh, a rash and think it's less benign. So number one is abnormal vitals. Number two is fever, especially if it starts roughly at the same time as the rash, as benign viral exanthems usually have the onset of a fever and then the rash a few days later. Number three is any involvement of mucous membranes. Uh, this is specifically very concerning for things like SJS or TEN. Um, if it's non-blanching, again, this represents bleeding into the skin or erythrocyte ex extravasation. And one of the concerning things for this would be vasculitis or any of these more concerning uh, findings here. Um, pain is definitely a red flag as well, uh, especially you should think about sweet syndrome, which is a uh, rash that is very painful and is associated with like malignancies, drugs, things like that. Nikolsky sign is another one you'll hear about, and this is basically um, any rubbing of the skin. You know, if you just rub your skin and then skin sloughs off, that's Nikolsky sign. And you can see that in various, uh, various diseases. But one of the more concerning ones that may be causing this would be something like pemphigus vulgaris. Um, and then any patient who has immunosuppression and immunodeficiency or new medications that could potentially be culprits for a rash. These are all the red flags that you should consider when you're looking at a rash. So again, that's a quick summary of blanchable versus non-blanchable rashes. I hope this helps you understand why we differentiate rashes uh, using this kind of feature. Please let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video and peace.